Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Learn React in 2020. I apologize for not posting anything recently. I simply just got a job, a full-time job, working as a web developer after my career shift, and things got really, really busy, and I can't, I couldn't really keep up with the job, learning at the job, and so on, and actually doing my um, YouTube as well. So uh, yeah, that's why I haven't been posting in a while. The good news is I have learned way much more than I used than I used to know when the time that I started this series, and I think that's really good news because I will be uh, like trying to get that experience and that knowledge across to you in the rest of the series. Uh, that being said, looking back at some of the code that we wrote, I have to say that I'm not happy about a couple of things, like a couple of patterns here that are really, yeah, a bit amateurish, at least to say. So I'll be working to change these as we go, and I will always make sure to explain things to you as we go as well. So hopefully that will be a good experience for you to see me going back to review the code, uh, the code that I wrote before and actually changing it and explain why this is bad and why this is the good way to do things. Okay, and on the same topic, the first thing I would actually like to change here is the fact that we don't really get um, the, the gradient anymore. And I'm not sure what exactly changed between this and the last video that I've made, but the gradient doesn't work. And the very simple reason for this is the fact that uh, in this case, the low color can be negative. So if the temperature uh, is low, we can actually get a negative low color. And I will just want to show you this on the quick. So let's let's console let's console log low color. Let's actually console log low color. And on the same case, what we can do is also uh, just to show you where exactly is the issue. We can console log bg. Alrighty, and this is for more than 12, so let's try, in this case, I actually need to inspect something, inspect this element. Alright, Firefox, take it easy. <laughs> so let's put it here, and we get to the console. I have not used Firefox for that much, but, yep, here we go. This is good, and make this bigger, and clean it up. Okay, cool. So now... If I uh, were to type something here, what happens is I'm getting negative 86 as a value of a low color, and that means that the gradient that we're applying is not valid CSS. Now, to fix this is very simple. Actually, what I will do is math.absolute, math.absolute of, of, uh, of low color, math.absolute of low color, and that will fix it. So basically, we get the absolute value of low color. So this is one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you are writing um, some mathematical some mathematical um, variables like this, mathematical equations like this, that you can get a negative value and sometimes negative value will not make things work. And you can see clearly now the big difference here. And uh, on the same topic as well, I don't like, uh, oopsie, that, that was misspelled. I don't like the, the gradient as much at high temperatures. So I am going to change this um, from 150 to actually 200 to make the effect even more pronounced. So now if I Google this again, I can see the effect is a little bit more pronounced. And for the sake of conformity, I'm gonna change it in uh, both sides. Again, you can see that the gradient is much, much more pronounced. So all I did was I made sure that whatever value you put here is actually positive good and I just changed this value just to make it a little bit more pronounced a couple of um, comments came along along and they were asking why are we using 150 and why uh, specifically 150 and it's extremely random just to give you a specific kind of effect so yeah you can change it if you want so with that out of the way what I would like to do in this uh, video is actually make sure that when we click on Sydney or whatever the location is we can get this specific search bar but we can get it here now um one of the things that i don't like about the code that we wrote as well is this you can actually click search with an empty search input and you can get an error obviously so you should be able to prevent that 
um, by very simply using the actual form that we have here. So we made a form, but we are not actually using it. So let me try to do this. What, I, what will happen here is I'm going to say that this input is going to be required and I'm going to save it. So that means that I can't submit the form until this input is going to have some value. But interestingly, this doesn't really change the behavior at all. And the reason for this is the, we are actually overriding the way the form works by simply um, doing an action when you click on that button and that's not going to work. So instead of doing this, what we will do is we will have this button as the submit button of this specific form. And on this form, this will uh, take um, a prop called on submit. And this on submit button will have that event that comes from the submit. And we can basically do event to prevent default. Oopsie. Event to prevent default. Yep, event to prevent default. And just to show you before we do anything, right now if I click here, I'm getting a very nice error that is native to the browser saying, hey, you have to fill this field if you actually want to be able to submit this. And then now I'm not nothing this is this function is being executed, but because this function doesn't do much, so yeah. Uh, so basically we can change this to um, prevent the default of the event and then we can go back to handle search we can go back to handle search and handle search is actually actually takes the event itself and it does this event to prevent default so that means we can take this guy out and put the e here now let's go back to see the changes that we have made so again if i click on search now i can't search without actually putting anything in that means I prevent uh, accidental and not good use of binging the, pinging the, the API for no reason. And I also prevent showing a stupid error message where the user doesn't do anything and also just click search. As you have seen now, an error comes up. And now I have to fill something here and it's normal. I just click. Everything works as, uh, as usual. That is one thing that I've noticed that was not supposed to be written like that, but should be written like this. Whenever you have an input or whenever you're trying to make or take um, um, input from the user, whether it's uh, email, whatever it is, whenever you're trying to take any data input from the user, make sure that you wrap it in a form to make sure that you're doing some kind of validation on the front end. In fact, there is a couple of other types that you can do here. So you think you can do format, wasn't it? I don't remember, but you can say, for, for example, you could do this as type type equals oopsie types equal email, for example, just for example, the type equal email, uh, this will actually not accept anything here if it's not an email. It's going to be please enter an email address. So I can do this now. And this is now a valid email address. And then the action happens. So always make sure that you do some validation on the front end before anything else. That is good. That's good progress so far. Now I need to move all this part from here. So I'm just gonna copy it and um, actually just copy it and remove it. I don't think, just cut it from here. And now this has to go into location. So what will happen is I'm going to put this, uh, let's say, let's see, just put it here. Now obviously uh, here, it's like React is complaining about very simple stuff. We don't have a place to store the query. So let's give it that. So here will be query, set query. Oopsie equal use state. Yes, use state and it starts with empty string. Good. And the second thing is we don't have the function that actually searches for um, for the weather. And for this, I am not actually going to use uh, handle search. If you look at the handle search function, the only thing we do is we prevent default and then we uh, get weather directly. So what I can do is I can pass the get weather function down all the way to a location and if you remember when i described before the way the structure works and actually you know what let's go through this again just in case you just joined the course but the way we have things here oopsie the way we have things here is actually quite simple right now we have uh, the weather card component here this is the weather card component so this is weather card. Oh, sorry, this is weather engine component. Yep, weather engine component. And inside this weather engine component, we have weather card component. So this 
this here is weather card component yep and could you please move this here good and inside that component we have another component called location called location here another component called location here and this component is here called location good now if you look at this structure you have you can see that we have a function that requests to the api and that function lives here and um, we want we used to initiate the action of that function from weather engine because it used to be in that file remember the one that we just took away and now we want to actually initiate it from here from inside location now what you can do is actually pass things here get weather so i'm gonna pass uh, as props so get weather equals i'm gonna just pass it as it is get weather so what i'm doing now is I'm passing things, passing that function from the weather engine down to weather card. And then what I will do is I'm going to take it from weather card, take it down to location. Now this, exactly what I'm doing here is called prop drilling. And prop drilling is basically not the best approach to do things, but I will explain in the next lecture why it's not the best way and how we can avoid it. But I am really not going to do that now. So I'm just going to... Uh, pass it along the way so what I'm doing here is I'm passing it from the weather engine to the weather card and then I bring it here as a prop and then I'll pass it again to location and then finally I can go inside location and say hey you're getting a new prop called get weather called get weather if I can spell it yep get weather and instead of doing this what I'll do is I'm going to initiate that function with query and uh, next to that I will do e dot to prevent default and we should be golden let's take a look at that ah yes good I'm really glad that we come into this so this is basically a result of our poor understanding of how react works so what's happening now is the way react works internally is by keeping a tree of all the components that you have and deciding whether that component should be updated or not now look at this code here and what you're doing here is that whenever we change the input value we are doing set query and remember from my very very first videos i said that set query Whatever, whenever you call a set function, you actually trigger a re-render, right? Now, when you trigger a re-render here, this whole component will be re-rendered. The location component will be re-rendered. And when you re-render the location component, React is going to uh, do some magic and check whether the container should be re-rendered and city should be rendered and so on. So what happens is when you re-render the location component, do you see the way these constants are inside the location components? So what happened is React is going to generate three new constants, one for container, one for city, and one for country. And these new constants are going to be rendered out here because they are inside the return statement. And because they are new, everything inside them is going to change. And because everything inside them is going to change, basically, once I do this, now I am inside a new input, and that new input does not inherit uh, the focus by default. Again. So I click here, what happens is React will re-render the whole thing. And because these guys are inside, so these uh, subcomponents here are going to be changed. And when these subcomponents, when container is going to be changed, and because these guys are going to be regenerated again, everything here is going to be fresh. And when everything here is going to be fresh, I'm losing the focus. And the reason why I'm losing the focus is I'm actually not in the same input anymore. It's a different input now. That's why I'm losing focus. Now, the very simple solution to this is make sure you do not define components inside components. So if you want to take this, we usually just put it here at the, at the bottom. So now these components are actually outside of the location component. So when I change the on, uh, do the on change, which is going to set the query, it's going to come up here. And when it comes out here, it's going to re-render this, but it's not going to make a new container and a new city and a new country because they are not going, they are not dependent on this. They are no longer dependent on this. So if I go back here and search, everything is working normally. So again, this is some of the things that you really should understand how React works before you can write a code like this. But the very general rule is 
do not ever define component even if it's like uh, like this styled component whatever it is component inside component should always make them separate and if you need to pass props between them you do that good so we are doing well now uh, the second thing here I will do is I want to be able to switch between Cairo and this uh, search bar simply what I will do is I'm going to uh, input um, input state I guess yeah um, I guess it's fine so what I'll do is I'm going to yeah it should be fine sit input sit input state so what I'm doing here is I'm making another piece of state that will hold literally the state of uh, uh, of the component here and it will start at false so what I'm saying is input state is going like this location component will have some kind of input mode yes i think input mode sounds better so we can change this oopsie actually let me try this again sorry excuse me for this i think input mode is far more expressive so input mode and set input mode and input mode will start as will start as false good 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 Good. What I'll do now is I know that input mode is false. So what I'll do, I will show the city if input mode is false. What I'll do is if input mode, input mode is false. This is input mode is false, right? And and so whenever you find input mode is false, render this and and return city. Okay. Now, if input mode is true, what I will do is I'm going to go here and say input mode is true. If if you do have input mode, and and return this return the form so and the end is basically saying uh, if this is true do this as well right so now i have this only because input mode is uh, false but if i set this to true if i start it as true i get this good so we are almost there now the next thing is i need to be able to when i do on click here when i click on this i'm going to simply pass pass a very very simple function that is going to set input mode to true and that's it <laughs> it's actually very simple so you click here now and you get this and then you can search and then i'll bring it back up here beautiful now a couple of tweaks just to make things a little bit more interesting is basically let's copy this and paste it and let's have a cancel a way for the user to cancel oopsie a way for the user to cancel their change and um, this is going to be a very simple button if you click that button we are going to set input mode set input mode to false again happy days let's test that i go here i click here i don't want to search for anything i go back to whatever i was looking at beautiful another thing i want to do as well is i would like to change the cursor here i would like to change the cursor here to pointer because i think it's important to make sure that we communicate this stuff to the user at the same time what i'll do is oopsie this is not the right one on hover on hover i believe that's how we do it on hover what i'll do is top equal negative five pixels so it's going to move to the top slightly and for this to work you need to give it position of relative over here and we should be good to go so yes you kind of hover over it and it's like hey I, I am clickable you click it and then you can search for a different comp uh, different city and you are good to go and uh, I'm done whatever it is whatever you want to do let's test this again Kuala Lumpur and that's it happy days so in this video i've shown you a couple of errors that we had basically in uh, the code that we've written and we've made sure now that we only show uh, the search bar if you click on the city to change it and we also handled what if the user clicks here and doesn't want to search it for anything anymore thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you guys in the next one Bye bye